Welcome to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us as we study the Word of God together. Go get your Bible and let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. Heavenly Father, we come right now, we just thank you, God, and we ask you to keep us and guide us and open our minds to your word. We ask you to protect those outside in this heat and protect those who can't protect themselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So the last time we we, we were here, we were talking about um, Rehoboam, and Rehoboam ruled what part of uh, the Israel nation? Judah. So, House of Judah, south. South. right? Yeah. The South. So today we're going to talk about, because we just split, um, we're going to talk about the North. We're going to talk about the House of Israel, okay? So God had chose Jeroboam. We know that Jeroboam is now king of Israel. And so we're going to talk about what he did and what he didn't do. But we also know that we are at... Uh, Shechem, right? And when we left off, <laughs> uh, Jeroboam got ran out. Okay? he We know he passed away the way we did it, but when the last time in chapter 12 of First Kings, we see that Rehoboam tried to go, God told him not to, not to go. And then we go in Chronicles and we see Jeroboam got, um, him and his people got ran out of uh, of the Israel territory, okay. So let's go to First Kings chapter twelve, verse twenty five is where we're picking up. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there, and he went out from there and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Okay, so God picked you to run over his people of Israel because you had a good heart. And the first thing you do, it says, I don't want to die, so we're not going to worship God. <laughs> because for him, it wasn't spiritual, it was political, because he knew that if the, if they go to Jerusalem, Rehoboam was going to interfere with that, right? Mm -hmm. So he said, they're going to kill me, and everybody's going to go back to Rehoboam. So now you don't have faith in God, but also you don't want to lose what you got. So he got a lot of fear, a lot of fear, and a lot of fear. And you know fear will get you every time. When you don't consult with God, fear will get you because you follow with fear and not following God. So, um, um, the note says that the Lord ordained political, not religious, division of Solomon's kingdom. The Lord had promised Jeroboam political control of the ten northern tribes. However, Jeroboam was, was to religiously follow the Mosaic law, which demanded that he follow the Lord's sacrificing system. So let's go back to um, when Jeroboam was picked, okay? And... Let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 11. And this is when um, uh, Ahijah told him he was going to be king. Verse 37 says, And I will take you and you shall reign over all your soul's desire. You shall be king over Israel. And if you will listen to all that I command you and walk in my ways, and do what's right in my eyes by keeping my statutes and my commandments as David, my servants, did. I will be with you and will build you a sure house as I built for David. 
and I will give Israel to you, and I will afflict David's offspring. So he told him, like he told Solomon, what he would do, right? If you follow me, this is what's going to happen. So, so let's see what Jeroboam doing. Let's go back to verse 28 and see what he did. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. And he said to the people, you have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Behold your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so number one, Rehoboam and Jeroboam listening to the wrong people. Mm-hmm. Both of them taking counsel. I don't know who they talking to. Because these people got them doing crazy stuff, right? And now he's saying you got to worship these two calves who took you out of Egypt. Huh. Let's go to Exodus 32 <laughs> and 4. Right Start at verse 1, uh, Freedom. Exodus 32, 1. Uh-huh. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people assembled about Aaron and said to him, Come, make us a God who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Tear off the gold rings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. Then all the people tore off the gold rings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took this from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made it into a molten calf. And they said, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now, stop. That's it. Yeah. So now, just like Aaron, they worshiping gold calves, right? First commandment he <laughs> Jeroboam is violated is what? No God. No other no gods before me. So now he that's so we, we making a list. He violated the first commandment, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see what else he do. And he said one in Bethel and the other he put in Dan. Then this thing became a sin, for the people went as far as Dan to be before one. He also made temples on high places and appointed priests from among all the people who were not of the Levites. Okay, so he did two things in this sentence, right? He worshiped in high places. Remember, we we talked about this. You're not supposed to be worshiping in high places, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he, um, he violated that, right? And then number three, uh, he really lost his mind, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not supposed to who was not supposed to be messed with as who on who I'm sorry who were only supposed to be priests Levites. so he appointed other people other than the Levites and so let's go to um we're gonna go back and reference second chronicles 11 verses 13 through 17 and I'm just gonna reference it so you guys remember when we talked about this last week we talked about um, how the priests and the Levites came from Jerusalem because Jeroboam had cast them out mm-hmm. from serving as priests, mm-hmm. and so now he, he they talk about the high places and the go idols and the calves. So that's back for your reference. But let's go to Exodus. Twenty nine. Jeroboam all up in um, um, Exodus, ain't it? <laughs> um, and uh, 29 and 9 says, And you shall gird Aaron and his sons with sashes and binds and caps on them, and the priesthood shall be by, their, by a statute forever. So the Levitical line had to come from the house of Aaron, right? Which is the Levitical line, right? Mm-hmm. So, of course, that means that you can't make up a priest, but it makes sense that you're gonna make up with some priests for your new religion because, of course, you knew you couldn't use God priests because God priests weren't trying to die, right? right? Numbers one and five says the name of the men who will assist you, 
um, from Ruben Elazar. He he gave you the list of the people who's supposed to um, be be Levites, right? And then you also find that in Numbers thirty-one and ten. I'm not gonna go all the way deep in that, but this, but he this is what he doing, okay? So let's go back to First Kings twelve and uh, go ahead, Frida. Sorry. Um. Uh. So before we get too far gone. He doing all of this just out of paranoia because well, well, you know that you're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. Well, who governs Jerusalem? Jerusalem is in the north. So no, in the south. Jerusalem in the south, and he over the north. Uh huh. Oh, and he don't want everybody to go right. south. Right. Read the first sentence again for me. Go back to twelve and twenty-five. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. Where is that? He, they tell you Shechem is in the Kill Country of Ethan, which is on the, it's in the north. It's in the north, okay. But keep reading. And then and he went out from there on the north and built Pen Nuel. Okay, keep reading. Jeroboam said in his heart, now the kingdom will return to the house of David. Keep reading. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will return to their Lord, even <coughs> to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Oh. So, but but this let's, let's oh. stop right here. He has a reason to be paranoid because when he was claimed to be king, he had to go hiding while Solomon was alive because Solomon was going to kill him because he was supposed to be king. So Jeroboam's paranoia <laughs> is valid, but he doesn't need to be paranoid because God is going to protect him if he trusts God. So it's almost like, okay. oh, if they go down there, they're going to turn away from me. I'm going to lose all the people. I'm lose Correct. Control. But he's already, uh, he already has paranoia because this has happened to him where a king is coming after him because God blessed him with, God said he was going to bless him with Israel. So I'm not justifying what he did, but in my mind, if this has already happened to me before, then I would be fearful to make moves. But you know, out of fear, you make wrong decisions. God had already ordained that he was going to have Israel. Mm -hmm. So all he had to do was trust him. Okay? okay? Yes. So everybody on the same page? Yes. Yep. Okay? So when we left off, we were talking about he he um, changed uh, the Levitical priest. He get, he changed the religion. He, he, we worshiped him in high places. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back and see what else he did. 32. And Jeroboam appointed a feast on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the feast that was in Judah. And he offered sacrifices on the altar. Okay, so he's saying now, instead of we we worshiping, he changing the feast day. So that's number four, right? Mm -hmm. The feast day. Let's go to Leviticus 23. Told y'all we gonna be all up. He messing all up in here, right? Mm -hmm. all <laughs> 23 verse uh, let me see 33 he's changing the feast of boots so it says that um, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying to speak to the people of Israel on the 15th day of the 7th month mm -hmm. so he's like I'm going to change the religion and so I'm, instead of y'all doing it on the 15th day of the 7th month, we're doing it on the 15th, month, 15th day of the 8th month. And he might do it like Judah is. Mm -hmm. Say it like Judah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, he, just doing, he, he just doing a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so because he didn't want to do the same thing that Judah was doing. Now, mind you, God ain't... Where, where did he consult God on this? No way. He ain't asked God nothing. So, so we we had four things, and we ain't even got to chapter thirteen yet. He has already recreated everything, and it says, um, going back to First Kings, first thirty three. Re read that for the rest of the chapter for me, um, Nancy. So he did in Bethel sacrificing to the calves that he made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar that he had made in Bethel on the 15th day in the 8th month, in the month that he had devised from his own heart. 
and he instituted a feast for the people of Israel and went up to the altar to make offerings. So you see right there that he has basically, um, they said Jeremiah instituted a religion festival to compete with the festival of booths held at the temple in Jerusalem and it scheduled it for the 15th day of the 8th month, October and November, exactly one month after it was divinely ordained that the Julian card counterpart. So, you know, he's doing a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, we have our little chart. And going back to our little chart we did with Jeroboam. Jeroboam is, he is ruling over the north, right? Is he God-fearing or idol-worshiping? I don't worship it. So, okay. Mind you, he doing what he want to do, right? Yeah. Now, everybody knows what happens. When you doing wrong, what does God do? Oh, he don't inst No, no, y'all ain't listening to the pattern. He don't instantly punish them. He always sends somebody to talk to you. He always sends a prophet, and then you get punished. He don't just say, oh, you may, that's just like if you see a kid doing something wrong and you just hit them and you don't tell them why they got hit. You got to tell the person, hey, you're doing wrong. Stop it. Mm -hmm. And that's a repeat pattern. So let's get that back in our minds. Solomon just, God talked to him three times, right? Yeah. And then at the third time, he knew what was going to happen, right? The same thing with Saul. Saul got a warning mm -hmm. from, um, Samuel, and when he messed up that second time, then he got punished. Right. David got a warning, but David was smart. When he got his warning, what happened? He did. He repented. Not saying he was perfect, but he, he humbled himself. And so that's the difference between, you'll see the difference between Rehoboam and, you know, they told him to stop. They gave, he gave him a reprieve, and he still got in trouble. Right? So Jeroboam is going to get the same thing because God placed him there. So he's got to get a warning. So let's remember the cycle, y'all, okay? He just ain't finna, there's nothing to be struck down unless he said, don't turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and in, inside joke, Bible joke, if you didn't get it. Okay, let's go to 13 and 1. All right. And behold, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing by the altar, altar to make offerings. And the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down, and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. And when the king heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar at Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him! And his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up, so that he could not draw it back to himself. Okay, so the man of God is coming and said, this is what's going to happen because of your evilness. And the first thing that Jeroboam says, okay, no, I, I repent, I'm sorry. He don't say, I repent, I'm sorry. Let's get him, because he's talking up against me. And when he reaches out his hand, it's paralyzed. And he can't draw it back. So he can't even seize nobody. Nope. Right? He's stuck. Let's see what happened next. The altar also was torn down and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me. And the man of God entreated the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. Stop. Now y'all know that was a trap. Mm -hmm. 
He said, now, nah. he said, okay, uh, you got God out for me, so now you're going to come home with me, and I'm going to give you a reward for what? Mm. We're praying to God like I asked you to after I told him to get you. Like that's just like the they, they like the the witch with the breadcrumbs say I'm gonna get I'm fat get y'all this food and then I'm gonna cook you in the stove. Yeah. That's that don't that's you know you don't take gifts from from yeah, people. He can he yeah he can just he just change your hand from being paralyzed not paralyzed. He, he didn't change his hand, God. I mean, I mean yeah, right. but I'm saying like why would you what reward can you give me of what right. God has given me to do like that? But he's the king. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. He didn't want to use his money. Okay, so let's see what the uh, verse 8, what happens. And the man of God said to the king, if you give me half your house, I will not go in with you. And I will not eat bread or drink water in this place. For so was it commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, you shall neither eat bread nor drink water nor return by the way that you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way that he came to Bethel. Okay, so we're going to take a little break in the story. Okay. We're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 23. 15 through 20. Stacy, read that for me. He said 2 Kings 23. Uh-huh. Starting at verse 15. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the altar at Bethel, the high place, erected by Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, that altar with the high place he pulled down and burned, reducing it to dust. He also burned the Asherah, and as Josiah turned, he saw the tombs there on the mount. And he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar and defiled it, according to the word of the Lord that the man of God proclaimed, who had predicted these things. Then he said, What is that monument that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is a tomb of the man of God who came from <coughs> Judah and predicted these things that you have done against the altar at Bethel. And he said, Let him be. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came out of Samaria. And Josiah removed all the shrines, also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which kings of Israel had made, provoking the Lord to anger. He did to them according to all that he had done at Bethel. And he sacrificed all the priests of the high places who were there on the altars and burn human bones on them. Then he returned to Jerusalem. So right there, we saw the prophecy, right? And then we see, the, in this chapter, we see the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 11. And then it'll, you'll understand why he didn't mess with that prophet's bones. Okay? Now an old prophet lived in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told to their fathers the words that he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, which way did he go? And his son showed him the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. And he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and he mounted it. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. <clears throat> then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may, I may not return with you or go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by the way that you came. And he said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> the, the, the young prophet knew 
what God told him to do. Right. But then the old prophet said, an angel came and talked to me. Mm -hmm. If you were in this predicament, who would you listen to? Believe God and I'm in. Correct. Mm -hmm. But the key is, is this. He said, this is what the young prophet said. The word of the Lord came to me. Right. The old prophet said an angel came to him. Mm. Now, it might be trivial. It might be just words. But if God came to you and said X, Y, and Z, and he showed his power, mm -hmm. it would be harder for me to be like, okay, you coming to tell me what God told me. God can tell me himself, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about that all the time. Mm -hmm. How we going to, somebody else, what God told me to tell you. Right. This is an example. <laughs> this is an exact example of what God, that, that mm -hmm. saying, God told you to tell me. Mm -hmm. And what God told you to tell me was a lie. Mind you, a line. Pro, my, mind you, a prophetess told me that I was going to be married to a lawyer. I ain't married to no lawyer. Okay? <laughs> and so you got to be careful who counsel you listen to. God will talk to you. And if you listen to him, and God will, God always makes sure that what he says is fulfilled. So now this young man and failed in this old man trap and the old man did it so he can have prestige from Jeroboam mm -hmm. but he should have known better than to lie on God mm -hmm. let's finish the story so he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water and as they sat at the table the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back and he cried to the man of God who came from Judah thus says the Lord because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the command that the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which he said to you, eat no bread and drink no water, your body shall not come to the tomb of your father. So he will not be buried with his, his people. Mm. And that and that is a uh, a proverb to them. That's 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 disgrace. If you let's go to Ecclesiastics. Told y'all we gonna have fun today. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter three. And Frida, when you get to Ecclesiastes six, three through six, read that for me. Ecclesiastes six, three. If a man fathers a hundred children and lives many years, however many they be, but his soul is not satisfied with good things, and he does not even have a proper burial, then I say better the miscarriage than he for it comes in futility and goes into obscurity and its name is covered in obscurity it never sees the sun and it never knows anything but is better off than he so no no it's three yeah three through um six six, six through six yeah three through six yes go ahead mm -hmm. six. even if the other man lives a thousand years twice and does not enjoy good things do not all go to one place so this is this is this is wise right it says even though you should, you will not be buried it's the best whole purpose is you could do all the good but if you not you don't do what you're supposed to do that's a punishment right so let's go back Poor people, poor people, poor people. Okay. Let's go back and let's go to. He's disobeyed. And verse 23, 1 Kings 13. And after he had eaten bread and drunk, he saddled the donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back. And he went away. And a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was thrown in the road, and the donkey stood beside it, and the lion also stood beside the body. Now, yeah, what's the problem with this? The lion might kill the donkey. Thank you. The lion should be killing the donkey. <laughs> but instead, the animals, just like how a rapper proud, the animals is obeying God. Mm. Right? Yeah. Mm. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown in the road and the lion standing by the body. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. Verse 26, Nancy. 
And when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard of it, he said, it is the man of God who disobeyed the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord has given him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word that the Lord spoke to him. And he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. And they saddled him. And he went and found his body thrown in the road, and the donkey and the lion standing beside the body. The lion had not eaten the body or torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the body of the man of God and laid it on the donkey and brought it back to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid the body in his own grave. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And after, Go ahead. Okay. And after he had buried him, he said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave in which the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. But the saying that he called out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places that are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. After this thing, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but made priests for the stop, high places. So, um, I mean, um, okay, so the old prophet got him killed. Right. Yeah. Repented and said, ooh, we messed up. Mm. You finna die. But then he felt some kind of way because he's the reason why he died. So he went back and got him and, and gave him a proper burial because he was responsible for why he died. And then the man said, um, he said, for saying that he called out by the word of the Lord against the altar of Bethel, against all the houses. So now he's repenting. He remembered what he really was before. He was a, he's still a prophet, but now he he's like, God is going to get us for this. And so he's going to be buried next to this prophet. So remember what we just read in 2 Kings mm -hmm. when Josiah went to saw these bones and asked who, this, who, who was there. It's these two men's bones. Mm -hmm. So he didn't oh. burn their bones. Oh, okay. Everybody got what I'm talking about? Yeah, I was wondering. Okay. Because this, the prophet, the, the young prophet did what God told him to do to a point, and he said this was going to happen. That's why we read about what happened. It exactly what he prophesied happened. He just didn't get to see it happen. Mm -hmm. And so his bones and the old prophet's bones, because he repented, those bones did not get burned into ashes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's, everybody's with me. Yeah. Before we move on, any questions? Why did the old prophet do that? Because he wanted to be buried near a real man. Got like no. What which, which what what? Why did he do what? You gotta be why more specific. Why did he trick? The, after Josiah did what he had to do, and like what, what, he he finna leave though. Like he on his way out a different way, and then the old man like ooh. Okay, so did you miss what I just said? I don't think so. Yeah, you did. I said he did it because he wanted to find favor with Jeroboam. Okay, he wanted to he he so he's an old prophet he's living under Jeroboam's reign he the man rejected Jeroboam okay. so he got the old he got the new prophet to come and do exactly what God told him not to do mm -hmm. because he originally thought he was going to find favor with Jeroboam mm -hmm. right. but then God got the old prophet and said ding 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 you belong to me and gave the young prophet a prophecy now you finna die for being disobedient and when he realized what he did, he repented, the old prophet. He buried the guy the correct way and said, what we doing here is wrong. That's the story. Do you get what I'm saying? Josiah hasn't been born yet. Josiah has not been born yet. The I Josiah just died. That was, was the second, second king. No. That was second, that was second that was Okay, weird. so let me let me, let me me give, give you the story. The reason why we went to second kings is so I could, the prophecy was in first kings when the guy told let's let me slow down when god told jeroboam this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. go back and read it for me nancy now uh okay. let's go back to 13 uh-huh yeah go back to 13 when he said start at verse four no 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 start at first one okay and behold a man of god came out of judah by the word of the lord to bethel Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make offerings. 
And the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. Stop. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the prophecy. That's the pro okay. What we read in 2 Kings, Josiah is born, mm -hmm. and he did exactly what he said God was going to God, He did exactly what God said he was going to do. Yeah. He said he, he burned, he, he destroyed the high places and the monuments and, and took the bones and burned them on there. Yeah. The only bones he didn't burn was this prophet and the old prophet that we just read about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, I, yeah, that part I understood. But I'm just trying to figure out after the, the prophet who had it right, after he did his prophecy, like, I ain't finna eat or drink with... Because Jeroboam invited him. He, I ain't finna eat and drink with you. And so then he left. And the old prophet was like, come eat and drink with me. He was like, I ain't finna eat and drink with you because the Lord told me not to. And then the old prophet was like, the Lord told me to tell you to come drink with me. No, okay. no, Why? no, the Lord didn't no. Tell him. no, he said the angel. Go back yeah, and read. That first. was my point. Okay, first. okay. But he lied. He told him okay. to come drink with me. I so thought, let's, slow, he lie to him? let's slow down. He lied to him. I'm going to say this for the third time. Because he planned on getting favor from the king, from getting for 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 killing this prophet, because he oh. knew that the prophet was going to die if he was disobedient to God. Okay. 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 So he purposely set him up. And, yeah. And That's what he said. He lied him. to him. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back in the word. It is. Yeah. It's not no perp. It's not no. We're not assuming that he lied to him. Uh, Verse <laughs> eighteen says, yeah. "Bring him back with you into your house." That he may eat and drink water, but he lied to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The okay. the sentence says he said the prophet said an angel spoke to me. Got it. And, okay. and then you didn't follow the story either. People that said his son. Now watch this. Nobody said caught this. His sons came back and reported all that the prophet had said. Yeah. And who he say it in front of Jeroboam? They heard Jeroboam tell him, "I'll give you half my kingdom." Right. Yeah. So now so they, they went back and said, so "Look, daddy. hey, daddy, look, if you go ahead and get rid of him, he already they promised Jeroboam had the kingdom. What would he probably do for you? Correct. If you take care of this dude, he said he would give him a reward. He give him a reward. And so if he and, and so when the reward, he you know, and the guy said, I, um, if you gave me half of it, I still wouldn't do it. Right. So okay. it's the same thing when the dude ran back when David, uh, they killed that uh, the dude and they, and they said, oh, David uh, Saul is dead. And they thought they were going to get a reward for doing something to to of God's, uh, of the king's enemy. Yeah. So the old prophet was like, oh, I'm going to get this man to come back because I'm going to get a reward for getting him killed. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got it. Now yeah. I get yeah. it. Yes, okay. <laughs> but the whole point is, it said he lied. Yeah, mm -hmm. he lied for his gain. But mm -hmm. then the point is not that he lied and he did it for his gain. It's not only did the prophet die, but this man repented. Yeah, after he did because he wrong. did he knew he was wrong. Okay, okay. He came to himself, mm -hmm. and so the whole point of me reading the Second Kings is so I wanted to show y'all this is the prophecy, mm -hmm. and this is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Just because a man disobeyed God don't mean that God's word was going to become void. But these two sets of bones are now not going to be touched because they the old man repented and the, and the young guy gave a prophecy. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Josiah is several generations down the line. It's yeah, not that's, like Rehoboam's son. No. It's okay. going to be up down the line a little bit. It's going to be, he said, and, and it's a pro, it's a, none of the, most of the prophecies are not saying this is going to happen tomorrow. Right. Just like Ezekiel's prophecies, this is going to happen at one time to be determined. Yeah. So it never happens when you think it's going to happen. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Just like in my example, this, I was supposed to get married according to this prophetess in my early 30s. I didn't get married till almost 40. So God dictates the time. Not man. How much money did you pay her? I didn't pay her anything. <laughs> <laughs> you got in the wrong line. You got in the $100 line. I don't know. I, I have to see the fruits of my money. Does it, um, does it make, well, I'm sure it does because Jeroboam is 
in Israel, but the prophet came out of Judah. Well, it had to because he threw all the priests out. Did we forget? <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's who was giving him good counsel? Everybody that would have gave him good counsel gone. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. I because I he was in Shechem. He was where, yeah. he was in one of the high places. Remember where they had all came there. Yeah. So he threw all of the, the good, right? All, not all the good, all of the Levit, the number Levitical. one Leviticus yes. was the Levitical priests were the only ones who didn't own any land. They were just there. Right. He yeah. threw them and all out. out. Right. Right. And we right. talked about that last week, and we talked. That's why I talked about it again this week because he didn't have no good counsel. Right. He didn't have nobody praying and saying, "Hey, you shouldn't do this, whatever," because he knew that if he kept those people there, they were going to warn him. And they were going to go back home. Because he uh -huh. from Judah to and he didn't want himself. them to go yeah. back home because he was yeah. fearing he was going to lose it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it kinda but does. how does it feel to gain the whole world and still mm -hmm. lose your soul? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeroboam is a good example to gain. He gained 10 tribes. Mm -hmm. And you still yeah. didn't follow God. Yeah. <laughs> but this, guess what? I can't yeah. get mad at him. You right. want to know why? Because Samuel prophesied that. That he, this was going to happen. That you get a king and a king wasn't going to do right. Mm -hmm. Because God, you did what you need a king for. Yeah. You're still human. You're still fallible. The only, we do have a king. But he was, he's part of God. And that king is not fallible. But all these other kings that they're trying to replace and trying to be like the, the Joneses don't work. Mm -hmm. And as we see, as we keep on going, we see that being like the Jones, the Jones is gonna get you in captivity yeah. again. Yeah, but that just—I mean, I just in pointing that out, it was like, oh, so even from Judah, that prophet came from Judah to tell him, of, you know, like, look, this is what's about to happen. Because these are still yeah. your brothers, exactly. So God tell you to go tell them. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, he risked his life just going there. Yeah, he sure did. Because he's from Judah. Yep, and going. They're in civil war right now. Right, yeah. they they exactly. war. Exactly. They're fighting. Because remember, we read that Rehoboam and Jeroboam yeah. stay fighting. Yeah. During their whole time together. Okay? Yeah. So if everybody, let's let um, everybody where we need to be to, mm -hmm. we, we go on to verse 33 to find out that the prophet turned, did a 180 and say, oh Lord, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Let's see what Jeroboam does. After this thing, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but made priests for the high places again from among all the people. Any who would, he ordained to be mm -hmm. priests of the high places. Stop. That like Does that sound like what we do now? <laughs> 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 to anybody, we, we ordain people to do our agenda. Right. People who are not qualified, people who don't know the word are preaching. Yeah. They take a sentence out of the now they would take this sentence out of the Bible and say that this is giving me authority to be a priest. Mm -hmm. Right. Because God ordained Jeroboam and chose Jeroboam, so Jeroboam had the right to ordain priests. That was never his position. And e Solomon didn't even ordain no priest. Mm -hmm. David mm -hmm. didn't do that. Saul wasn't dumb enough to do that either. So these people making up rules as they go. Forgetting the Mosaic law. Okay? And so, think about it, like you just said, they'll see the Bible that Jeroboam the king ordained priests from everybody. And they'll just take that. Yeah. Not that he did wrong. Yeah, <laughs> right. But see, it say right here, Jeroboam ordained priests for everybody. Get it from everybody, anybody. Yes. And like you said, they'll say, I got the right to do that. Yeah. So he didn't, God gave him a warning. When God paralyzed his hand like this, that would have gave me enough say, you know what? Let me um let me get my life together. Yeah, yeah. But God does that to us now. He gives us warning signs, say, you know what? Let me um let me let me let me talk to you for a minute. Let me get you together. And we don't take the signs. So then we gotta get to the lowest to the low to be then now we're gonna see Jesus. And now we're gonna deserve me. But you forgot when he warned you. Don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars. We still collected at two hundred dollars because it looked good. Okay, let's go back. Verse thirty four. And this thing became sin to the house of Jeroboam, so as to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. So now he's not going to have a successor in his bloodline 
because he's cutting off this line. Okay? So let's find out what happens. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. Now, I would like you to understand that Abijah must be a common name because Rehoboam's son, who succeeds, his name, succeeds him in the name Abijah, Jeroboam's son is named Abijah, but he's a kid. Let's not confuse them. So both of these Abijahs were born at the same time. One will be king of the south, and one is a kid. Gotcha. Everybody get me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't get it confused. Okay. All right. Go ahead. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise and disguise yourself, that it not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Behold, Ahijah the prophet is there who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. So Je this child must be sick, right? We just heard mm -hmm. it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. Now, Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. And the Lord said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall you say to her. When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am charged with unbearable news for you. Go tell Jeroboam, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, because I exalted you from among the people and made you leader over my people Israel and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. And yet you have not been like my servant David who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart doing only that which was right in my eyes. But you have done evil above all who were before you and have gone and made for yourself other gods and metal images provoking me to anger and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring harm upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free in Israel, and will burn up the house of Jeroboam as a man burns up dung until it is all gone. Mm -hmm. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dog shall eat. And anyone who dies in the open country, the birds of the heavens shall eat, for the Lord has spoken it. Arise, therefore, go to your house. When you when your feet enter the city, the child shall die. Now, so, okay, so, mm. oh, Jesus. That was a lie. So, what you think, what you think I would have did if mm. I was Jeremiah's wife? I wouldn't have never went back home. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never went back home. Be like, <laughs> he said, as soon as I put my foot back in this city, my kid gonna die. So I'd have been staying right where I was. My kid would have never died, but then God still gonna find a way for you to do what you're supposed yeah. to do. But I'd have been like, he had, a, hey, he had the line that killed uh, the prophet, chase her back. Chase her, yeah. Because <laughs> I'd have been like, or the, dog, or the donkey come after her. No, I would have been like, forget him. I didn't do it. Oh, I'm not going to kill my baby. And then, he, so it's like, if I go so I can pass the message, you know, I got to pass this message to him, but as soon as I get there to pass the message, my, my child. So he, he said, as soon as she put her foot, so let's have him what happened. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something pleasing to the Lord the God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. He's just a kid. Mm -hmm. He ain't do nothing wrong. Go ahead. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel mm -hmm. who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam today. And henceforth, the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water and root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their fathers and scatter them beyond the Euphrates because they have made their Asherim provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. 
Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Terza. And as she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And all Israel buried him and mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam. Hold on. Okay. Ahead. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warned and how he reigned, how he warred and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his place. Let's go to Second Kings seventeen. Verses 20, verse 21. <clears throat> when he had torn Israel from the house of David, they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them commit <clears throat> great sin. The people of Israel walked in all the sins that Jeroboam did. They did not depart from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. And he is spoken by all his servants and the prophets. So Israel was exiled from their own land to Assyria to this day. Because of Jeroboam's leadership, they never, this is what happened. That's deep, right? Go ahead and finish up about what happened. Um, did we finish up um, 19 and 20? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when uh we're gonna stop there. Okay. And we're going to um um even though they say it's in Chronicles, there's really no I mean they talk about him a little bit, but they don't do what they did with Ray No extra information. It's no extra information. Because if that's enough what we just heard. Yeah. So when we come back Next week, we will pick up at um. Uh uh. We already did that. We already did that, y'all. Where y'all at? Yes, we did. You're right. Okay, so we will pick up in chapter fifteen. Okay, we will pick up in chapter fifteen. Let um, and I will have a new list ready. A new chart ready for you guys for the kings. Please understand. You need to make sure that you understand when I say they're the king of Israel and when I say they're the king of Judah. Because it will get confusing if you don't. There's going to be several kings in Israel in a, in a period of time that's going to repeat itself. It's going to be quick. Okay? Mm -hmm. Chapter 15 talks about one, two, three, four. Four kings in the one, that chapter itself. Mm -hmm. So I need you to pay attention. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, when they was talking, when um, verse 10, when he said that he's going to cut off every male from Jeroboam, but then his son, so his younger son didn't, um, Nadab? Who are you talking about? For um, Jeroboam? Because Nadab is his son, right? And Nadab go, go. Is... Nope. No. 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 Nadab is not his son. That's his name. Go back and tell me what you're referring to. Okay. In verse 10, it said, I will bring home from the house and cut off every from Jeroboam, every male, both bond and free in Israel, and burn up the house of Jeroboam as a man burns up dung until it is all gone. Mm hmm. And then in verse <clears throat> 20, at the time the Jeroboam reigned was 22 years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab, his son, reigned in his place. So his what, son okay, so took Jeroboam's place. I thought he was he slept with his father, and Nadab, his son, reigned in his place. That sentence saying that he's he's going to cut the line. Not necessarily at that point, uh -huh. with his with the son that the child had just died. Right. That's what I was thinking of. Okay. Right. Okay. But we're we going to talk about Nadab. Yeah. We're okay. going to talk about him. But he ain't nobody for real. 
Right. So I, was, I was just making sure, like, okay, we can still keep going his line and cook. Yes, we got a little bit more to go. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna talk about Nadab next week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But we're gonna, but they going. He's going. Remember, we. Okay. So I want everybody to listen very carefully. We just said that when God prophesies something, it's not instant. Correct. Okay. So just because He said He gonna cut off his line. Doesn't mean he gonna cut his line off today. Well, it's like right. with Solomon too. Huh? It was the same way with Solomon. Yeah. yeah. He I said he gonna he gonna yeah. do this, but, to his son. but, but to it's his not. Son. It's gonna be when God says do it. So it's right. not instant. Mm-hmm. So we got to stop looking at it as time. And I told y'all at the beginning of First Kings and Second Kings, this is what not chronological. We just read what happened to Jeroboam and one of his sons, but we are gonna be talking about some more stuff later. I'm trying to keep it streamlined, but I can't keep it all streamlined. Because when we get in chapter 16 and 17, it's, it's gonna, they gonna jump around and we are yeah. gonna have to go with the ride. Yeah. And so I also need, if you have a question about the story, stop me and we'll reread it. But I also need y'all to pay attention a little bit better. Because it was uh, this, these stories are very very simple they're not complicated and I'm not being critical I'm not saying nothing about nobody we just have to listen and get what we need to get okay so if I say something and it's too quick stop me okay everybody cool so we understand that Nadab's son might still be alive but it's 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 God still gonna cut his mind off yeah I'm just curious if there was just more children because of well, uh, Jeroboam probably had a whole bunch of kids just like everybody else. Every kid had a whole bunch of kids. But he said every kid, he, he said every kid, uh, every male, free. So that means even his slaves are going to be kids. Right. Okay? So it's part of your house. Yeah. Okay? Mind you, it might not happen. Just like that prophecy with Josiah, Josiah wasn't born yet. Right. Okay? So we need to put it in perspective what we're actually doing. Any questions? Comments and concerns? All right. Heavenly Father, we come right now. We thank you, God, for giving us some uh, eventful uh, um, information today, God. God, we thank you for being able to see things in your word that we haven't seen before. We ask you for your love, and we thank you for your love, God. We ask you for to enlighten our minds and to keep us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.